Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show where we fish for everything we can. Now, I love adapting, I love trying anything. Fly fishing for trout, fly fishing for sailfish, beach fishing, rock fishing, boat fishing, course fishing, river fishing, lake fishing. As long as it's fishing, I don't mind. But I like to be able to adapt if I can. Even on a trip when you set out to single-mindedly catch one species, which in this case was thornback ray. Well, we got sidetracked somewhat by catches made by other anglers. But by adapting, got some great footage for you. Down on the Somerset beaches, great fishing down there. Can't wait to get back down there again. I really enjoy it down there, given the good weather. Anyway, let's check this episode out. See if there's some more tips there, because I've learned, I've learned more tips than I've got fingers on my hands. It's a good one. The North Somerset shoreline, a haven for shore anglers who don't want to drive all the way to Devon and Cornwall for some good fishing. The trees and bushes grow right to the cliff edges as much of this coast is sheltered from our prevailing southwesterly airflow. And that muddy water of the upper Bristol Channel actually draws in a huge number of fish within casting range of the shore fishermen. It's not an area that's overfished. In fact, there are loads of spots to try, but you need an initial contact. In my case, it was Craig Butler of the West Coast Tackle Shop in Minehead. He knows all the top marks and also when is the best time to fish them. We're at uh, St Aldridge Beach uh, down in Somerset here, uh, just uh, east of Watch It, uh, just targeting the Thornback Rays. Uh, Pretty, pretty good beach for the thornbacks. Uh, you pick up bass here, smooth hounds, cod in the winter. Um, it's a high water mark. Um, basically, sort of pretty clean sand um, at the bottom, from the bottom of the gutter, which is about sort of 40 yards out. And uh, it's sort of a mixture of sand and mud. Uh, the thornbacks come to feed on the on the prawns and the little crabs, which are sort of living in there. Um, so ho hopefully today we'll get one. It's a little bit lumpy, but you know got two chances haven't we? Uh, bait wise, uh, fishing a unwashed squid, um, that's just, that's, they're slightly smaller a lot of the time, uh, but obviously with being an unwashed, has a lot uh, a lot more scent. That's uh, not what they call dirty squid, is that the same thing? It, it's not, but they people call it the same. The dir yeah. dirty squid sort of um, came from uh, the Ilex squid, which was just nasty, stinking, Stuff. It squid. Was, it was good, dirty squid. It, you know, people call the unwashed squid dirty squid, uh, but unwashed. And a bit, bit more smell in that then, Craig. Yeah? yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's just basically the, the box stuff you get is a. Uh, it's caught fish for years and always has done and always will, but it is bleached and packed and graded for human consumption. Now, um, with, but, with this beach here, I can see we've got a little bit of shingles at the top. Yep. It goes away to mud, like you say. How far out does that go here? Because you've got a huge tide fall here. On a uh, at low water, it could go out about a mile out. It, a you know, mile. It's a flat, yeah, it goes out down the bank, flattens off, and goes flying out. Uh, so the tide rushes in here, and hopefully the fish push in as well. And it's a no fishing zone there, really. No point yeah, in fishing no, at all. You don't want to be doing that. What uh, would be? You end, up, you end up being wasted mud, so avoid Is that, that right? all cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, so two up, hours up or something like that. Yeah. It's a two hours up, two hours down mark. You could fish two and a half up if you want, two and a half down, but generally the best the best of the fishing is uh, two up and two down. Uh, there is a reef, I don't know if you can see over there, there's some waves breaking over there. There's a reef there, and that's the low water mark down here. Uh, that is a, a definite don't go if you've never been before, because uh, you will get cut off. Okay, so uh, then you, need you, to won't go even, you won't even know you've been cut off until you are cut off. Until it's too late? Too late, yeah. Plenty of people have been pulled out of there. Um, but you know, the, the fish are around, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. And now, where would they go for bait? Where would be the closest town would be what? Uh, watch it, tackle shop yeah, in Watch it? Yeah, West Coast Angling in Watch it, yeah. uh, in Swain Street. Uh, that's uh, that's the nearest tackle shop to here. So that's the best, you get the best bait there as well, that's yeah? That's it, yeah. It's a sister shop to the, the shop I work in in my head. So, yeah, it's all good quality bait. I'm going to say that anyway, but it is. And yeah. a, a bit of charter fishing there as well, a bit of a little harbour there? Yeah, there's a nice harbour. Um, Two, two uh, charter boats work out there. There's Seafire, um, skippered by Sean Anning, and Scooby Doo 2, skippered by Steve Yendel. They both cater for novice and beginners, children, 
uh, families and, and experienced club anglers as well. Um, good as gold, both of them, brilliant. And um, what species they catch out on those boats? On the boat, it's predominantly thornback rays, congers, dogfish in the summer, and smooth downs, of course. Uh, in the winter, it is a mighty cod venue. Um, I don't think there's many ports in Bristol Channel which can compare with Watch It as a cod fishing port. So it is a centre for big cod, uh, or num it? numbers of and big cod? It, depending on what we've got in the channel of the year. Um, two years ago, it was massive numbers of two to five pound fish. Last year, it was a modest number of fish over 10 pound. So year class plays a big, a big thing in that. Uh, but, you know, whatever's happened in the Bristol Channel, watch it has seems to be the epicentre of the boat fishing for the cod. And can you get the codling in winter off the beach here? Yes, yeah, definitely. You get so this St Aldrich is also a good yeah, winter beach. Yeah, here. you'll pick up double figure, up to double figure cod here on a regular basis. Okay. Um, you know, sort of mostly double figure cod are few and far between on the beach, but you know they consistently get, do get caught here. Well, fingers crossed, one of these rods is going to go off very shortly. Yeah, so. Uh, one of the tools we use down here um, to load up fish bait or worm, uh, black lug wraps or something like that is a bait loader. It's, uh, use it a little bit like a baited needle, but it's a slight different. I'll show you how you use it now. First of all, you need to uh, oh, I've dropped the hook. <laughs> Cut a piece of. I'm using bluey today. Cut a piece off there, about the size you need. Then, with this end of the bait loader, you slide it in on the uh, on the shaft of the loader like that. I'll just pick up the hook, and then with this hook up top, just click, pull the hook on it like that. With the hook shank laying on the bait then you hold the line and the bait loader in those two fingers in that yeah those two fingers there get your bait elastic and then just as you would oh, just as you would a normal bait whip it on Sometimes slides up, all you need to do is keep the line tight, move the bait up, whip it around. Alright, that's all whipped up. Now just push the bait and the hook up to get it out of that hook. Bring it out of the hook and then pull the bait down. And that's your finished bait with the bait loader. So you can use that, uh, Charlie, of squid, other yeah. baits as well. It's not just bluey, is it? Any, no, any, any, any wrapping bait you want to do? Yeah, any, any bait you use a bait elastic with, you can do that. Um, sometimes I slide a few ragworm up, up the hook first and then tip it off with a wrap of bluey, squid, black lug, mackerel, any, anything you're whipping up, really. Yeah, it's a hardy little tool to have. And you can bend this. You can bend this this bit in and out to match the hook size you're using. This is size two, so the way it comes in the packet is perfect for a size two hook. But um, you can bend it out as as much to fit a 3040 hook. Bigger hooks, yeah. Yeah. And bigger baits. Bigger baits. And I I sometimes use a size six hook. I bend really? it right in. Good man. Fingers crossed we catch a fish with it. Yeah, hopefully. If not, we use the needle to go out and stab them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.
rig I'll be using is an up and over, which was shown before. Basically, it's a running ledger, and then your hook clip goes up and over, a relay clip or a bait clip, and onto the imp or impact clip. So when it releases, you come up, back over the clip, giving yourself a running ledger. Nice long running ledger. What's that? Four feet at least that trace? Yeah, probably about four foot or so. And what trace and hook have you got on there? Uh, that's 30 pound. Just do a single 3 0 at Thai Viking. Yeah. And the little silver thing above, what's that? That's a sequin and a base stop. Basically, because we've only got one hook, the, the top hook of a panel is designed to basically, well, its main reason is to keep the bait all in one piece. But with this, with the bait stop, just slip slide it down to the size of your bait to stop it flying back up and again. That's a custom that's a custom built sort of thing you can buy in a tackle shop, that bait um, stop? Yeah the rig you can buy bait stops which is on a almost on a little wire loop you can almost put the line through it and slide it back on. But this is a um, power gun. Power gun yeah so you fire, stop yeah. up with it. Yeah gotcha okay. Okay, so this is how I rig up a bluey and squid wrap. So I basically I've got a, a tail end of a bluey. There's no point fill it in it because it's only a small, small piece of fish. So I start by taking the tail off just to stop it spinning. And now I've got a baiting needle. And I'll push the baiting needle through the bluey. Like that. And then a piece of squid. Just lay it back on top. And then just begin to elasticate it just to bind the two together. The needle's just to support it and give you a sort of central base yeah, point, yeah. really. Yeah, just to keep it all together, and it will stop the bait, just, you know, becoming curled up. So when you when it's sat in the tide, it won't twist, or when you cast, and it won't become a bit of a helicopter. So the important thing really is straight baits. You want a straight line yeah, of any yeah. sort of bait. You don't want it to twist in it. No, no. So we can just finish the whip in by just pulling it. And that'll dig back into the into the fish. So now. I might, you might as well keep the needle on the bait just to aid the whipping of the hook on again. So you simply just hook the hook into the front of the bait. Oh, I see, and you whip again? Yeah, then just rest the, rest the hook back onto the bait. And then begin to whip the hook back on. And just up the line. So you can pre-make several baits like this, can't you, really? Yeah, yeah. So you basically you put your bait like that. And just slide back off the needle. And your sequence is stop knot. You just slide that stop down to the top of the bait, do you? Yeah, yeah. They can be quite stiff sometimes. The sequence are, are, are visual aid or are they just, you know, what's the idea of the sequence? It's mainly because the stop, the stop knot's bit alone isn't really big enough to hold the... It could slide up over that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got a little bit of elastic on there now. And your trace there, what, what breaking strain is that and hook size? Uh, that's 30 pound amnesia and a 3 0 mustard up tide Viking. And there you have it. That's it, all set to go. Let's get it out there. While the other lads were using multiplier reels, I stuck them on my large fixed spool reels. They are easy to use give a good casting distance and are equally capable of taking a big fish. Well, okay, a dogfish isn't exactly a big fish, but it was my first fish of the day. So after unhooking it, I put it back to grow into another dogfish. Well guys, a bit of a change over situation here. The thing is, we got at the top of the tide here. We've had Paul's had a couple of real banging bites and hasn't connected with him when he struck. I've had one dogfish, Craig's had a dogfish. It's slow, but here's the kicker guys. Craig's had a phone call from one of his friends fishing up 
at a secret spot. They won't even tell me where it is. And that's the honest truth. They do not want it named. It's really, really good. I can't even tell you what the guy called there last night. Smooth hound spot. Unbelievable fishing. It's on a reef. It's very snaggy. We're going to have to break into two parties if we're going to try and salvage something out of this. But they seem to think it's not worth waiting here now, the turn of the tide. Their fish might come. We might miss the rays. But this other place, there's an outside chance for Thornback Ray. But they say a big time chance of getting some smoothies, some big, you know, probably, probably there might even be a fish up towards double figures in there, so that's worth going for. So we're going to pack up, work our way back up to the car, and then drive further down the coast inland, as it were. How can it be inland, Grand? There's no water there, well, there's lakes. Up in the channel, further in the Bristol Channel, and um, it's about four or five miles from where we are. Let's see if we can't catch something up there. I hope they're right. I never really like moving. And it's an ebb tide, and I always love fishing an ebb tide, but we've got no choice, guys. So a lovely spot here, St Aubrey's, but it's bye-bye St Aubrey's, and hello, secret squirrel. Right, we've just uh, finished fishing down on St Aldrey's Bay on the beach. Uh, isn't so bad, we had a few dogfish. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, about the holiday camp uh, just behind us, um, and they're good enough to let us anglers um, come and park and use the access to their beach. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Paul, the manager of St Aldrey's Holiday Park, who would, could tell you a bit more about the short breaks um, they offer anglers um, in and out of season. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we've gotten to know quite a lot of uh, local fishermen over the years that uh, have come down to uh, fish uh, all, all hours of the night, uh, depending on the tide, uh, and uh, have since evolved to doing all sorts of competitions and events that we've done. And uh, this year, in fact, I think 27th of October, we're actually doing a specialised fishing event, which uh, uh, Craig will be here doing um, tuitions and lessons. Yep, uh, so yep. it's during the half-term break as well, so Fantastic, kids yeah. and families will be coming along. Yep. Uh, hopefully it should be a good fun week, and at the end of the day we can all come up and sit around a fire or sit in the bar and tell some fishing stories yeah. of how big the catch was and, uh, <laughs> was so big, yeah. uh, and what the day was. So we're hoping for the weather and it should be a good event. But we can cater for up to 200 now on site and uh, the self-catering and uh, catered, uh, we're making use of the restaurants. Uh, and you can book anything B&B, overnight stay or uh, stay for a full week, uh, um, depending on how long your uh, trip wishes to be. Uh, and there's also caravan and camping as well now uh, for those that uh, have caravans or, or want to uh, tent it and do a camping and fishing trip. Yeah. Uh, and if the, if the weather's not too good and uh, uh, or the tide's in between the tide, then uh, there's all the facilities, the swimming pool, the tennis courts, lots of uh, sports facilities and even entertainment going on in the evening as well. Or a drink and a bite to eat down in the bar, watch the sunset and uh, wait for the tide to come round to go and uh, catch your dinner. Excellent. That sounds about right. I think yeah. uh, a quick half a shandy now, I reckon, and we'll be on our way to the next mark to fish, I think. Great, you're right. buying. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, thank you, Craig. Thank you for having us today. Thanks very Cheers, much. Thank you. We'll pleasure. See you in the future. Cheers. Just look at the incredible scene that confronted me at the new secret mark. It was like a lunar landscape. It was like something from the Jurassic period. This was supposed to be a fishing expedition, not a field test for a landing on Mars. The huge rise and fall in water on this stretch of the Bristol Channel had exposed huge squares of reef that had been broken into large blocks by countless storms. It made walking a nightmare, especially as I had not only the fishing equipment, but all the camera gear, tripods and batteries as well. The things I do for a totally awesome fishing show. But I reckon this is the first footage ever shown of this incredible area. And it's hardly surprising to learn that the whole place is full of fossils. Mind you, by the time I struggled over 600 yards across this landscape to the water, I'd probably be a fossil myself. It was impressive. A vast open panoramic view of rocks, rock pools and weed. 
but it's impossible to fish there except for a short two to three hour spell over low water when you could cast your bait far out and even then you stand a 70% chance of getting your gear back. I was told it was red hot for big fish and other anglers were already there fishing just waiting for that tide to drop low enough so that they could cast out from the bottom of the reef. It's patently obvious that this is not the sort of place to fish alone, especially at night. You could be walking around in circles for days. Well, you wouldn't be because you'll get drowned at night. There were two areas of rock platforms. I stayed with Charlie at one end in a quest for a thornback ray while the others began yet another route march right down to the corner of the reef where the hound hotspot was. It was supposed to be a kennel for the species. To be honest, my knee had given out and I just couldn't be bothered to walk anymore. All my filming hopes were pinned to the shoulders of Charlie. But my faith in his fishing ability paid off and he soon had a slackline bite that was obviously from a good fish. I didn't want to risk the big camera over those slippery rocks so thankfully I used a pocket HD unit to record the event. Luckily Craig was on hand to haul up the fish as in such a snaggy ground area, you have to get any fish up and over those outstretched fingers of the kelp beds and rocks. One single lapse in concentration could lose you a good fish right at the last moment. Try to maintain constant pressure. Keep cranking the reel handle, but watch your footing as you walk backwards to haul it in. Just look at the size of this thornback ray that took Charlie's bait. Now that really does make that long walk worthwhile. That's a cracking thornback there you got, uh, Charlie. Deserve that one. Yeah, well, everyone else has uh, headed off down there for the spruce hounds. I stayed here because I wanted the thornback today. Yeah. Um, I got this, this little cracker. He's about six or seven, maybe pushing eight. Um, just on a on a bluey on a pulley pedal. Just straight bluey, nothing else, no cocktails yeah, with it. Yeah, straight bluey. Hit as hard as I can. Left it out there. Um, just winded in. I felt it was slack. Yeah. Oh, you got a bit of a slack liner. Yeah. Carried on winding and he's yeah, nice little ray. That's a good one. Good one from the shore. It's a nice fish from the shore. Yeah. And I think I'll have one more cast for them, and then I'll uh, head off up try and catch some smooth valves up the other re uh, reef up there. And you want a stiller that one do you? Yeah I'll put him in the rock pool here for a minute he'll be alright because this is fresh uh, seawater and uh, yeah Graham's gonna go get the still camera for me yeah. to have a photo of him. Yeah we'll get a stiller that one for you. Do you put that in for a competition? Um, I can't do. Um, you know for your, for your specimens is it of the year or yeah, I, I don't, species hunts and things? Yeah it's for my species hunt that's why I wanted a ray that's why I stayed down here on the ray mark. Um, yeah, it'll be a nice one for the gallery. And just so people know, when you put them in a rock pool like this, the tide flow up here is so big, the tidal range, this is salt water he's in, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. only just dropped, so he's perfectly okay just staying there. You can see him swimming around. Yeah, I won't leave him in here too long, but... Yeah, I'll shoot off and get the camera, and then I'll have to go down and film these guys because they're catching loads of smooth hounds as well. Yeah. A nice fish. Well done, Charlie. Cheers. Thank you. Well guys, it's absolutely howling. Really, really pleased to see Charlie get that ray. It was just me and Charlie hanging out up here. I didn't have anything. I went for Slip Olympics and Squid Combo. They did not like it. But he got that on a bluey. Got a still picture for him, so he's a happy bunny. I'm now gonna go on another yomp across these awful, god awful boulders to see Courtney, who's fishing up there with all the rest of our other team with uh, Craig's, Craig's other guys up there. They've all moved up there because Courtney, by all accounts, is the man of the moment. And last night he had, wait for this, 10 smooth hounds to double figures from this secret mark. And I know that because they showed me a photo of it. Technology is terrible. We're struggling away. 
And the man says there's pictures of double figure smooth hounds. That can't be right, can it? Well, it can be because we're down on the mark with him now. He's already got one up in a rock pool. So even if I don't catch one or the other guys don't catch one, Corn is already starting on another session. And I'll, let, I'll tell you what, 10 smooth hounds to one angler just in one session, like a three hour session, that's some fishing. So let's get down there, take a look at what he's got. I'd already heard about the angling ability of the famous Courtney Creech. And I'd watch Courtney get a hound using the full zoom on my camera. And even at long distance, I could see he was in a whole different class of fishing. I sensed I really was watching someone a bit special. He wasn't an angler, he was a pure fishing machine. It was a total full on assault for the smooth hound as he knew the tide flow would soon push him further up the rocks and away from the best fishing area. Did I mention his pendulum cast? I fished with a lot of different anglers, a few of which I thought were good distance casters, but Courtney's pendulum cast is pure heaven to watch. He used a full drop, maximum power in the rod, and his pinpoint accuracy to drop the crab bait in a hole off the reef. Bait up, stride out into the waves, cast, load the rod in the tripod, start preparing the next bait. Now, the other lad's not catching, you're banging them out. What yeah. is the secret? The spot, the distance, what's the, what's the edge? Because you definitely 100% got the edge. I don't know, just locking it over. Yeah, I don't Probably. think it's luck. <laughs> <laughs> Big fish, isn't it? What do you reckon he goes? 14? 12? He's about 12, wasn't it? We're lucky. That's some bloody fish, yeah. Crack, crack of fish. Beautiful. The Ziplex man body look of it. Yeah, it's all you best. For those who don't know, Ziplex is the most coveted of all pendulum rod makers. Top class, reliable, quite simply, the best. This one looks like a bloody shark. Look at it. My godfathers. You know you're embarrassing all other beach anglers here, <laughs> don't you? What a catch, mate. Un unbelievable size. I'm impressed with the size of them, too. Beautiful. Nine eleven. That's a good fish, isn't that, eh? Might be a bit more, but look at the 12s, isn't it? Nine to 12s. Yeah, it's with the bag off. Right? Yeah. And what's it been like this year, Courtney? Well, you know, weather and fishing, is it? Been a bit cold, was that affected the smooth hounds? I think it has, yeah, they were very slow starting off, but it just seemed to be coming good now, like. And how long will they run like this, do you reckon, up here? Is it a matter of sort of a couple of weeks or can it go right through? Um, yeah, you get a good run for a couple of weeks. Then you should get another run again, then August one. Same size, you know, big ones like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be your biggest fish to come down this Bristol Channel? 
1712. Really? That's an animal. It was a Bristol Channel record and it got broke last night. Last night? Yeah. Oh, they told me somebody called it. Was it an 18 something? Eleven eight. Good fish. You fish it sort of right through all the neap tides. Ten ten minus the bag. Ten five. They're bigger that one, and they've got to look at it. Eleven nine. Good fish, yeah. Courtney only kept these four big smooth hounds in the rock pool for my filming, and he returned them straight away. It was good to see an angler put in his fish back, and these all swam away their fins cutting the surface like small sharks. He cranks his gear back so fast he was like a nine winding machine in a tackle shop. Get the rig in, rebate, cast out. He had a precision routine. And remember this is all virtually a gale of wind blowing. He uses really quite small crab baits and then trims them down to make them more streamlined for that distance casting. In fact, it was so mesmerising to watch his technique that I actually packed up fishing myself just to film him. No other angler in 50 years of fishing has made me stop fishing to watch him, I can assure you. Bait up, stride out into the waves, cast, load the rod in the tripod, start preparing the next bait. As the tide started to flood, so Courtney went up yet another gear, as he knew the incoming tide would eventually push him back up the rocks. The last thing a specialist angler needs is a lost tackle, as that simply adds yet another snag out in the sea for you to lose your gear on. Anywhere you fish on the North Somerset coastline has a huge rise and fall in tides. It's the Bristol Channel. It goes out quickly, but can come in fast as well. 
a gully that you walked through earlier might suddenly have three feet of water in it when the tides start to flood. Do not get cut off. Far better to contact Craig at West Coast Tackle in Minehead or watch it and see if he can give you a lot of local advice as to the safest spots to fish. Surprise, surprise, another angler manages to latch into one of the smooth hounds. Now, let me just do a count on this. I think that was five other anglers combined for one fish and Courtney Creech fishing on his own, five. In fact, Courtney finished two short evening sessions with around 16 smooth hounds all on his own. It just goes to illustrate how good this Somerset smooth hound fishing can be. Now, enough said. Let's just watch the master in action and drink in all the atmosphere of some great British shore fishing. Somehow, my local beach catch of Dabs and Rockley just won't ever be the same. 